So we made a video previously talking about this whole sequence, but we didn't have the finished results to show you. And it's always, well, it's kind of an uneasy feeling to, to say something works and then not have the, the evidence to show you that it does work. So this is the evidence that our process does work right here. Folks, about a year ago, maybe a little bit longer than that, this area had a bunch of stumps. I think five different stumps in here that from dead trees uh, that we had to dig out and get rid of and then redo this area. So it was all just a, a disaster. But what I want to do today is, well, I'm showing you the finished results now, but this is what can be if you're trying to redo, level out an area. Maybe you have a rough lawn, really bumpy, or a field that you want to smooth out. There's not an easy way to do that. You're not going to find the magic tool that just quickly flattens your lawn, takes the bumps out of it. But if you get to that point where you want to do a real renovation, then we can show you the process and, and how you can get to this point here, have a nice smooth lawn. You can turn it from a mess to something smooth with the right tools, the right equipment. So let's walk you through the steps that we took to get these results. Okay, folks, so again, standing right here, we had a lot of stumps that we had to dig out. And so we used a tractor with a stump bucket on it. We dug all of those stumps out and got rid of them. But Doing so, you're leaving big old holes, just big gaping holes all over the place. And you don't have to have stumps in order to do a renovation project like this, but that was just step one for us. And so we had to dig those out and that sure as heck made it a bumpy area. There's no doubt about it. So what we used after that stump bucket, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna fill those holes in. You wanna get a rough grade in. And so we filled those back in uh, to get it smooth enough to drive over so you're not going to tip over uh, you know if you would sink a wheel into a hole so you're going to get some probably some conflicting order of operations here depending on who you're talking to in this scenario we needed to till the land out first and then after that we wanted to spray but you're going to hear some folks say that you should spray first and that's probably going to be the right choice depending on what you have going on if we were in one of our big fields out here that had a lot of sod in it a lot of weeds just years of established growth then spraying to kill and weaken those root systems is probably the right approach and then you take a tiller through after that you do not want to use a box blade okay you think that those shanks on there are going to help rip up the ground and then you can easily pull all your your dirt and your your sod out of the way and smooth things out it is an absolute nightmare so a box blade a land plane a rake are not going to do th this kind of work you need to soften and loosen up the ground in order to be able to reshape it. And that is where a, a tiller excels because it's gonna loosen up <laughs> the surface of the ground, three, four inches uh, of the topsoil. It's gonna chop up all the organic matter, your grasses, your weeds, even sticks, leaves, anything else that's in there. It's gonna mix that all in and make it a very workable material that you can then come back through with a tool like a, a rake or a dethatcher in rare cases, maybe a box blade or something as well to smooth that out. But I think a rake or a dethatcher would be the primary tools that I would use after you have everything tilled up. Come over that and just big sweeps back and forth. You can change the grade a little bit, um, but you can smooth out all the bumps that are in there. And then you can drive over the whole thing, right? You could get a roller if you wanted to, or you could just drive your tractor tires, your machine tires, to kind of firm everything up back and forth. At this point is the optional spray. Um, if you're gonna reseed this, then you wanna give your seed, the intentional seed that you're putting down, the best chance of survival that you can give it. And so you can do that by limiting competition. And spraying is a controversial topic, okay? And there's a lot of different types of sprays. I'm not gonna say it has to be done, but you're gonna potentially have a little bit more of an uphill battle if you don't. Uh, but when you're when you're mixing up all that topsoil, you're bringing up a whole new seed bed to the surface. There's just millions of seeds that are lying dormant, hiding in that soil, just waiting for their chance to, to shine and to grow, so to speak. So if you want your grass seed or your wildflower seed or whatever it is to have the best chance of, su of succeeding, then you need to limit the competition. And so that's where that optional step comes into play. It's a one-time thing. It's not like you have to spray over and over and over again. So uh, consider that. Not gonna say you have to do it, but it's gonna help with the germination. So we actually did not spray here at all. And so these are the kind of results that you have. Um, so we tilled this originally last spring, late last spring, kind of getting to early summer. 
And it got to the point in the season where I didn't want to put grass seed down. We were getting into um, a, a pretty good drought. Not a lot of rain in the forecast. We didn't have irrigation down here at the time. And so the grass wasn't going to have a good chance of survival. And so I let it kind of just chill. And so there were a bunch of weeds that grew up in the summer. I came back late summer in like August, late August, and tilled everything up again and then just raked it out and smoothed it out again. And then just, I, I went heavy with the seed. So that's kind of another application or another approach to it, I should say, that uh, you can go heavier on your seed, your intentional seed, and try to then kind of suffocate everything else, the competition that way too. And that seemed to have worked pretty well for us. Again, this is a pretty small area, but it's uh, the same, this, the same sequence applies whether you're doing a small area or a large area. It just depends on how much you want to break off to chew at one time. Oh, yeah! Now, it's not to say that there's not a few bare spots here and there, but uh, the fall is the perfect time to do this. You know, early fall, very late summer when you're just starting to get into those cooler nights. Um, you know, you're getting some relief in daytime temperatures uh, here and there, and there's more rain generally in the forecast too, or you have irrigation. That, that's, of course, a benefit as well. Folks, we are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. Not only is it going to help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all-natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not going to corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not going to freeze, and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide wide find the dealer near you at rimguardsolutions.com but what we're going to do this fall just to fill in some of these these bare spots is just overseed one more time that's all we're going to do but you can see there's there's not much weed competition maybe along the edges we have a little bit of weed competition over here but far and away this is this is coming wonderfully it looks great you know and all the tools that we're talking about using if you have a tractor they can be used for other projects as well so you're not looking at buying a tool that's just to renovate a lawn, right? Or just to renovate a field. You know, you can put in um, gardens and food plots with your tillers. Uh, you can, we use it for driveway installation, actually ripping out uh, material and making that reasonable topsoil. Of course, renovations like this. So, you know, the, lands or the, uh, the landscape rake or the thatcher can be used, of course, for many different purposes as well on gravel driveways, um, dethatching for the lawn, seeding here, uh, trail maintenance, you name it. There's just a ton of a ton of things you can do with those. The sprayer, do that on your yard if you want, of course, for the renovations here too. It just depends on what you want to do, the approach you want to take. But if you can find a way to get a tool that's not going to be application specific, it makes it more versatile and it's easier to justify the cost as well. So we made a video previously talking about this whole sequence, but we didn't have the finished results to show you. And it's always, well, it's kind of an uneasy feeling to to say something works and then not have the, the evidence to show you that it does work. So this is the evidence that our process does work right here. And um, you know, the, the time of year that we're gonna put this video out as well is, is good for all you folks looking to do your renovations in the fall because that really is the number one time of year to do it. Um, the second best time is the spring. So just avoid like late May through mid-August, okay? You know, if you start your renovation in mid-August where you're doing all your prep work, that's great, because probably by the time you're done tackling that, you know, you're gonna be in very early September, which is the perfect time, typically speaking, to put down your seed and just take advantage of those fall temperatures and growing conditions. So there you go, folks. There is no magic button. There is no easy way about it. If you watch the other video we put out about this, there's not much of an argument there that there's a better way. You gotta put in the work. It's, you gotta get your mind wrapped around it that what's the trade off, right? You want, you're gonna deal with the bumps over and over forever, or you're gonna do something about it. You're gonna, you're gonna get these kinds of results, okay? These are pretty solid results going from the fall to June and the next year, okay? So a few months you have to live with probably not a good looking lawn or field, but then it's just gonna be back to where it needs to be. And this is only gonna to continue to get better throughout this year. And again, we'll hit it one more time this fall with some overseed just to fill in the bare spots. I like to overseed in the fall generally anyways. We do our aeration then, uh, our dethatching then. Again, the dethatching with the dethatcher is, is perfect for that too. Um, but it's just a good time of year to do it. And do you have good results for years to come? Now on that note, we sell tractors and we sell tractor attachments and we ship them nationwide. That's what we do. We like to show you guys projects, show you guys the tools, how we use them, lots of times what not to do with them as well. But we want 
to make you comfortable with the purchasing process and know what you're getting. And if you still don't know what to get, shoot us an email. Let us know what your needs are for a tractor or for your project. Give us a budget. But we can figure out your, your hookup. We can match the attachment to the size of the machine that you have or put the whole package together and make sure you're set up the right way the first time. There's nothing worse than feeling like you're gambling with your money. So we wanna take that, that fear and that risk out of it. That's just what we do. That's all we do. We sell this stuff every day of the week. And again, we ship it nationwide. So go to goodworkstractors.com. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video and I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.